Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Today is Ju uh, June 30th and I'm picking up where I left off in the last video. What we're doing is we're fleshing out the configuration portion of the app, adding some of the missing fields. We've got the starting balance, uh, we've had that for quite a while. Now we're putting in the cost basis uh, and unlike the starting balance, it does not actually get reflected in the table yet. Uh, so that is the next thing to do. So cost basis uh, doesn't have the text change listener on it. That's what I want to do next. So, and by the way, you're probably noticing some duplication starting to appear between these fields. I'm very much aware of that and uh, we'll be addressing that fairly shortly, I think. In fact, let's make a note. Okay, so all of our tests, actually, they're not passing right now because we've got a we've got a uh, compile error. But all of our tests are working, I think. Last time we checked. Yep. And um, so we're just going to pretty much copy and paste this previous test. Uh, this is the cost basis field updates the application model. And actually, though, before I get into that, do we have the ability to update the application model? We have set starting balance for, um, but we don't have set set starting cost basis. So let's do that. Changing the starting cost balance basis should change the stock market table model. Okay, that looks like it needs some, let's take a look at our stock market table model. Stock market table model, um, not calling that starting principle anymore, we're calling it starting cost basis. You'll notice that I'm not really thinking about this very hard. I'm just copying the pattern that's already been set down. Uh, and I pretty much trust that last time I did this, it was good enough. I, it's probably not perfect, um, but I'm not seeing anything that's raising any huge red flags for me. There we go, so that's working means that back here we can 
go ahead and wrap this up. That code works now. Now we need a set starting cost basis. We have that do nothing for now, which should cause the test to fail. Expected 39 was 7,000. Great. So we're going to just follow the same pattern as before, starting cost basis, starting cost basis, and uh, stock market table model dot set projection, starting oh, stock market projection. Looks like it's already in there. Great. That's interesting. What's that hard coded value at the end? Sell every year. Well, we'll come back to that. Okay. So that's working, which means that nothing's changed here yet. But now, here, we can go ahead and copy this code so that starting cost basis is what we're looking for here Okay, there we go. The neighbor of the neighbor of the beast. And it should fail because we haven't actually coded in that stuff. Yep, it wasn't updated. So that's good. So now we need to do this stuff. Should be able to just copy and paste that. Except for, except for set starting balance, it's going to be set starting cost basis. And that passes. So now, when we change this value, there we go, look at that. Look at that. That's beautiful. Not sure where our sales are changing in that way. That seems a little odd. Especially since our growth isn't changing. Let's make a note to check that. But um, other than that, things seem pretty good. 
actually the sales are only changing when the cost basis is um, is more than the starting balance, which should be illegal. In fact, I think I've got a note about that. Yeah. This is now relevant because we can edit it. Okay, so the fact that we're seeing that value is just uh, it, some sort of aberration resulting from the cost basis being freakishly large. So that's okay. Hmm. Interesting, but the sales are still changing. So there's our next field. Uh, the next one should be pretty much the same. I'm going to go ahead and get that one in before I start addressing some of these other questions. So to do that, I think the most effective thing to do would be to factor out this duplication though. So that's what needs to be done next, is to factor out this duplication. Um, I think I'll start in the production code. So, well, to begin with, we've got this. That's the name of the field. And this it's going to be the field. Pull that up there. Yeah, now we can factor this into add field. And then inline that. And inline that. And then add cost basis and cost basis field there we go we can bring this down to add components following our pattern from before lovely and that all works next off we've got this code it's practically identical the difference is the method we're calling. But because of that, and because Java lacks first class functions, um, I don't, I actually think this is as compact as it can get because this is different for each case and this is different for each case. So we can't pass in the function names, unfortunately. We can't say in JavaScript, for example, <laughs> just to choose a language, we could say um, create field and pass in application model dot starting cost basis without the parenthesis, comma application model dot set starting cost basis. And it'd be very easy to make that function work. Uh, since Java lacks first class functions, there's no ability to do that. So I don't think there's any way to make this less verbose, which is really unfortunate and, in my opinion, a major shortcoming of Java. But um, say la vie, that's what we've got. So I don't think we can factor out the configuration panel stuff any further. We're just going to have to do this over and over again, unfortunately. This is a pretty good factoring, though. And uh, we can probably get some stuff in here as well. So that's what we're going to do next. Uh, that, but that's it for this episode. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I will catch you next time.